Hi, everybody. This is Gail with Tanya. Welcome to Overcoming the Obstacles Today, where we talk about real obstacles faced by real people and the tips and tools that we've used to overcome those difficulties. So we all know that 2020, I think, has been probably one of the worst, if not the worst, year in everybody's lives. So we thought we would talk about how to stay positive. So if you're, if you're thinking about, you know, trying to find out how to stay positive in difficult circumstances or, or how to stay upbeat when things are just down, this show may help. So subscribe to the channel, please, if you've not already done so. But do give us, <laughs> Tanya's reminding me, do give us that thumbs up, hit us with the likes because that is so important. That really helps us out when it comes to Google algorithms, because it tells YouTube that we're making content you want to see, and it makes it more likely that YouTube's going to show this content to other people. So those thumbs up and those shares really do matter. So today I'm going to let Tanya, I know she's been on before, but we always have new people and new faces. So I want to let Tanya uh, tell you a little bit about herself, and then we're going to talk about positivity. So, Tanya, you want to take it away from there? Hi, everybody. My name is Tanya Lambert. I live in Missouri. I have a disability called cerebral palsy. It's a muscle disorder caused by lack of oxygen to a developing brain. In my case, it happened when my mom was seven and a half months pregnant, and I was born at that time and I didn't get enough oxygen, so my brain was damaged, which has caused the cerebral palsy. It's kind of like a computer who's not getting all the signals. It's pretty much the same thing. I have suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder all my life, and I have suffered with severe depression. I, it, I know how hard it can be to have to stay positive when you're depressed and you're down and even if you're a kid, you can be severely bullied. And it's not just an adult thing. It's, a, it's an everybody thing. And this topic is so important because no matter what your age, you can struggle with it. And so we need to help each other and support each other and lift each other up. And so that's why I came on today is because I want to help everybody do that for each other because I've known the highs and the lows. And maybe we can help one person. We've done our jobs. Gail? Yeah, I really firmly believe in what you have to say there. Because helping each other out is huge. Because one of the things is, too, <clears throat> sometimes when we get in difficult circumstances, we get locked in. And just to give you all an idea of my background, um, I have two kids, now adults, well, they think they're adults anyway. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> yeah, they're both married women. But, you know, how it goes, your child will always be your child. Um, so they both had chronic needs growing up. And we hit, the, my youngest one uh, generated many, many medical bills that we just could not pay. <clears throat> really struggled there. And... You know, we've moved frequently. I've been sexually assaulted. I was beaten. I had a head injury. I've lost many family members. So there's been times when it's been really hard to be positive, but it really helps to find a way through that and have some positive energy or positive vibes, good vibes, whatever you want to, whatever name you want to put on that. It helps to just find a way that's a little more upbeat. And I'm sorry for coughing today. One of the things I also struggle with is asthma. So my voice may go in and out. Tonya, it sounds like you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, I there. definitely do. I have asthma and I suffer from chronic pleurisy, which is an inflammation of the pleural in the lungs. So I understand that, you know, uh, it's, it's hard to deal with asthma and then you got to have to deal with the masks. It's a mess. Yeah, I understand that struggle very well. Yeah. And 
you know, you brought up masks. That's one of the things that I think has added some frustration or some angst onto the world. The whole masking and the whole situation of 2020. I mean, I think and, the problem with <clears throat> isn't just the, the breathing and everything. People are sociable creatures, and I don't think we realize how much we depend on seeing the whole face of the person and their expressions and being able to read other people's expressions for your social cues, even when you don't realize you're doing it. And without, without that, with the mask covering half of the face, you lose, uh, you lose the expressions of the people you're looking at, you're talking to. So I makes it, I think it makes us harder to relate to one another when we can't read a person's face to understand their, so their emotional, uh, signals. I, I think it definitely can do that. No, no question. Um, because we are set up to, we read body languages, we read facial expressions. So I think for me anyway, that's part of what made 2020 so difficult. But just because 2020 was one heck of a year with COVID that didn't stop a lot of other personal stresses from going on. And I know for me, we started out day one of the year, my daughter delivered a stillborn January one. And then we had lots of other issues and then also COVID hit. Yeah. And so, you know, we had to find a way emotionally through all of this. And I know one of the things for us is that there have been positive moments. Okay. And, and we've, had to hold on to those positive moments. Yeah. Yeah. Tighter. Now, I think one of the first things I'm going to suggest as far as positivity is really overlooked. You need to get enough sleep. When you're not getting enough sleep, your mind suffers, your emotions suffer. You're quicker to be angry, upset, agitated, irritated, and you're like, well, we're all stuck at home. We're all sleeping. No, you're not always sleeping. You can be worried. You can be scared. You can be upset. All these will interfere with your sleep. And so my first tip is to make sure you're getting enough helpful rest, which means deep sleep. And I mean, you can catnap and still be exhausted. So for me, and I know this is true for me, if I don't get enough sleep, I can be cranky. Take last night, for example. I didn't sleep till five this morning because I was in pain. And even the pain medicine that my doctor prescribed doesn't help, didn't help because I do have a spinal injury. And it flared up last night and the nerves in my spine caused me a lot of pain. And I had texted Gail around five something this morning when I was still awake. Listen, I don't know if I can be on the live stream because I knew if I didn't get at least a few hours of rest, I was going to be useless. I was going to be angry, agitated, and upset. I always am when I'm not awake enough and not functioning. I was able to get some sleep, and I can function now. And I think we really overlook how important that is. Everybody harps about nutrition and exercise. Sleep is just as vital. And we, we've talked about that before being vital because it helps us function. And I'm not really the best on getting a lot of sleep, but I did find some something that really helps. And that is YouTube. And YouTube has a number of videos that help with sleep. So I'm going to pull this up for just a minute so everybody can see this. Um, at least I'm hoping everybody can see this here. I'll pull I that up. You can see it. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Okay. So I typed in Delta Waves for Deep Healing Sleep, and it popped up with several videos. Now, you can see from these red lines on these videos that I've certainly used them, um, but I found that the deep, deep Healing Sleep, when I pull up those videos that are designed for that, that they bring me the most benefit. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually, there's a bucket load of them. I can't sleep unless there's a fan on. I, even in the winter, I know that sounds odd, 
but it's easier for me to breathe when the air is moving. So I have a fan on. And I have learned that the white noise of the fan, the noise that it makes, or just listening to like rain sounds, there's apps on your Play Store or your, you know, or whatever uh, that you can get for free that will play all kinds of sleep stuff or meditation stuff or whatever. And sometimes just listening to the rain calms me, you know, white noise is what they call it, you know, and that calms me down and sometimes helps me to sleep. I'm like you, Gail. I don't always get enough sleep, but even if I can get like last night, two or three hours, because I was up again by 830, um, which made my service dog very unhappy because he wants me up by five in the morning and I was just going to sleep by then. And um, morning pups. Uh, yeah, the given night owl, a morning dog. But, you know, that, you know, even a couple hours, if it's a couple hours of good sleep, that makes a difference. And you brought up something else, too, and you mentioned your service dog. Yes. And that is something you don't, it doesn't have to be a service dog to make no. you feel better. You know, that connection mm -hmm. is huge. And, you know, they love you unconditionally, mm -hmm. but they also force you to go outside because you have to help them take care of their needs. Yep. And then they start sniffing or I'm talking about dogs. Cause that's what I'm the most familiar with. Although as a teen, I did have a cat, but with dogs, you know, they start sniffing at something and, and you have to look or you get interested in, in what they're doing. And so your, your focus shifts. What do you, yeah. this is what I've noticed. What do you notice, Tanya? I, and oh, we have Laurie Smith in. Hi, Laurie. Laurie. Welcome today. I've had a lot of different animals. I had a nine foot iguana named Gertrude. Oh. And, and I'm not sure ever if my iguana had a dog for a pet or if my Sheltie had an iguana for a pet. They loved each other. But regardless of what your pet is, they need you, you know, a domesticated animal of any kind. You've got to feed it. You've got to take care of it. You've got to maintain it. And they, and my archer, he will not let me alone. He will literally steal the pillow out from under my head. And, you know, mom, I got to go to the bathroom. I'm not going to leave you alone. It's time to get up. I'm bored. I want to play, whatever. And right. I cannot. Look, he's 111 pounds. For those of you who don't know, I have an English lab and they're bigger and kind of stockier than not taller than the American labs, but they're stockier. So they're heavier. And uh, so he's he's 111 pounds of determined and he does not let me uh, get away with moping or not taking him for a walk or whatever. And I, I really appreciate that. That was another two tip I was going to give is an animal. So it doesn't have yeah. to be a service dog. Now, mine is for many needs. Um, and I know Gail had a service dog at one time, Tomlin. And he really helped her out. Tremendously. But even if it's just your cat, your pet snake, you know, whatever. You know, that gives me the shivers. Um, something or even no offense your kids are not animals people but even your little kid that needs you to get up to get their breakfast something to force you out of bed something yes you can focus on other than yourself be that an animal a child your niece your ne you know whatever something that's going to force you out of your bed even when you're the most depressed, especially when you're the most depressed, that's mm -hmm. not going to let you wallow, can help you stay positive because you're thinking of something outside of your own mind. Because if I let myself, and I suffer from depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and a slew of other things, anxiety, if I let myself stay in here and stay like in bed or stay in my little apartment, then I know I'm not going to be positive because I trap myself in my own mind. I don't know if that makes any sense to any of you or not, but anybody, well, it does to me. Anybody that suffered with depression, I'm sure, or anxiety will understand. And I suffered with emotional abuse for almost 18 years. And I just came to realize it, you know, and I, I went through angry and everything, but 
you can't let yourself be trapped in your head. You have to focus on something else. Even if you live alone and don't have any pets, give yourself a routine to start. Make yourself go out and walk around the block for five minutes if you can't run. Or jog through, and I have squirrels everywhere at my apartment complex. I love to go and, and walk around the apartment complex just to look at the squirrels. Something to force you out of that out of that bed and out of that apartment or out of that whatever that state is that you get into and you'll find your mood lifting and becoming more positive because you're not solely focused on self. And I brought up while you were talking about um, animals there, I brought up, uh oh, I hope she'll be back in a minute. Um, her screen just went dark. I still hear some sounds, so I know she's there. Um, I just shared a screen about how many animals were adopted since COVID hit. And the numbers they're saying, I couldn't find an exact number, but they're saying the numbers have skyrocketed. So I'm just going to share that again. Um, oh, Tanya's back. Hi, Tanya. I'm sorry. My phone rang and I haven't learned how to stop the ringer. And yeah, I'm still learning this whole phone thing. It's okay. I'm just glad you got a new phone. But I just brought this up about the adoptions and sales of dogs. So getting new pets was something that really happened during the coronavirus in huge numbers. As you can see from here, um, this one just USA Today says rescue and pet adoptions are way up amid the coronavirus crisis, mm -hmm. even with shelters being closed, which is a huge, huge deal because you couldn't get in as easily to adopt a pet, but yet it happened. And that's because I think a lot of us were trying to connect. You know, we were looking for that friend. And I think that certainly, you know, judging from this is a very valid way of bringing some calm and peace in with a difficult circumstance. If you can't adopt a pet or you don't have the money to adopt, because I know there are adoption fees or whatever, and you can foster a pet, go to your local shelter and tell them, hey, listen, I'm willing to foster a dog. Yeah, it's going to be hard to give them up when they have a home, but you're giving that dog something that will last a lifetime in the skills. Because Some of these dogs don't have the skills to live in a house. They don't know how. So having someone who's willing to spend the time to help that dog learn that humans are okay and that not all humans are going to hurt them and they can be loved and they can be in a home is just as valuable as someone who adopts that animal. And I also like that you brought up the squirrels. You know, I have this picture in my mind of people who throughout generations, you've seen people outdoors feeding squirrels or birds and yep. you know the, getting that connection that way even though they weren't necessarily the, i mean they didn't own them you know yeah my grandfather uh i'm bringing up some comments that grandfather i've missed was alive he had these squirrel he had a house in town but there was a ton of squirrels around and he every day he'd go out and put out fresh water for the squirrels and fresh food and when he got sick, when he couldn't do it anymore because of his heart, he made my mother and I promise we would keep taking care of his squirrels. Aww. That was just as important to him as, as, as grandkids were or, or anything else. To him, it was just as vital that his squirrels be taken care of than anything else that he thought of when he was going to pass on you know he wanted to make sure somebody took care of those squirrels for him so even if you don't yeah. have a pet you know ducks in the local park need love and attention too squirrels uh, although they're really funny running on the ground and candy the wee service dog is in so hi candy Okay. and she's saying yes that's because so many people have mental issues with COVID-19 racial tension and the economy in disarray yes you know all of those things plus the the personal tragedies that people are in and you know some of those are covid relate related so. next, i have another tip uh, music 
if you any type of music if you love rap or country it doesn't matter music can lift your spirits and help your your soul soar even if you can't sing a tune in a holy bucket it doesn't matter music can send your soul and your spirit soaring so music can be another way to stay positive you know sometimes when i'm at my lowest i'll search for the happiest song i can think of and and put it on for example i know she's a bit young but one of my favorites is jojo siwa i love her song boomerang it reminds me of when i was a kid in school and the kids would always bully me and my mother would always tell me tanya sometimes people are bullying you because they're jealous because that's true something in you that they feel they need to beat down so that they can feel better about themselves you know so it just doesn't have to be a person your age you can find joy in any kind of music i don't care what it is it could be box fifth symphony you know whatever with me i start playing hey bartender up really loud by lady annabelle and lady a because i don't even drink but it's it's the whole idea of you know it's eight o'clock on friday night i'm still at home all my girls just keep on blowing up my phone Mm -hmm. and so they say he ain't worth the pain do what you got to do and so it's a bad relationship yep and so to get back at the bad relationship she, she is dressing up she's going out she's living her life she's got she's surrounded by her friends so even though it's a little bit of a weird song for me i like the positive message behind it you know favorites is actually born this way by lady gaga because i mean i've had a lot of people comment that, that when i'm sitting down they don't think there's anything wrong with me but when i stand up to walk they notice the difference in my gait and the way i walk and i you know i it's one of i call them my anthem songs these are songs that speak to me about my life and they've become strong songs about how i live my life and one of them is born this way the other one is it's my life bon jovi and a friend of mine i had a leather a jean jacket she beat it on the back of it born this way and she told me she said when you're wearing that jacket and someone makes fun of you just point to the back of the jacket and turn your back on them <laughs> i got it and let's see um we have got yes i'm going back to some of the comments in the chat Oh, and Candy, the wee service dog, is saying that fish tanks are known to call people, that this in turn lowers the blood pressure. Mm-hmm. And I found this website um, that talks about just that. It's aquarium therapy, stress, and anxiety. Stress, stress and anxiety um, with fish tanks. And here it is. I pulled it up, and it says aquarium therapy, the fish how fish tanks can reduce your stress oh it definitely it's a nice big picture of a fish tank there it definitely can i have one in my living room a little 10 gallon fish tank that i just love to watch and listen to you know that's another one that definitely good point candy that can really help lower your blood pressure and the nice thing about it is that keeping fish is something that is relatively inexpensive. You know, if you have a goldfish, you're you're talking about a dollar for the goldfish, and you know you spend another buck or two on a goldfish bowl if you don't already have one, and then another dollar on fish food, and you are good for a year. Yeah, you still have to sometimes clean the tank, but you know you're good. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely fish. Let's see what else. Oh, Peter Parker is in. So hi, Peter, hi, Peter. Parker, saying that his grandma, the one that died on Christmas Day, her last sister died yesterday. I am I'm very sorry. sorry to hear that, Peter. Very sorry. I think and, that Peter yeah. brings up another one. Is I was asking if some of my friends about this because I knew we were going to do this live stream and I wanted to get their opinions and put them out there. And one of my friends, Ann Weidman, she says that for her, family is vital for her mental health and her mental well-being. Her family is vital because they help her. If she's alone too much, then she 
tends to spiral down, but, but having her family around her helps her and, and so does her faith. And that helps her to increase her mental stability and, and to stay positive and stay up, upbeat. And, and so uh, Peter brings up a good point that your family uh, can, can be a lift up for you. Yes, and, and they can also be a cause of stress. Oh, yeah. Now, I do remember one of the best pieces of advice. Strong. I'm sorry, what? I said you can't have a family, a true family, without having strife. I, yeah, I think that happens. And um, But I do want to share that one piece of advice that my aunt gave me that has stood the test of time is... When she found out I was getting married, she said, go out and get yourself a bunch of girlfriends because you are going to need them. Oh. And, and I think that's true whether you're married or not. Oh, you know, yeah. we, we need our friends. We rely on our friends because for a lot of us, they go on. They're our, our family that sometimes is a lot nicer to us than a regular family, you know. So yeah. spending time with friends. and. Personally, I think spending time with online friends count. Thank you very much, Tanya and Laurel and Candy and Laurie and Peter and those of you who are going to be watching later and those of you who are in our Facebook group. You know, we're yeah. we're connecting. You can connect that way where you can't always go visit somebody right now. Hopefully that will change at some point. You can always visit over Facebook, FaceTime, Skype, you know, things like that, too. I think hobbies yes. are also important. I love to paint. I love to draw. Uh, for me, hobbies are are important. Oh, I'm yeah. Valerie Reese, she, she crochets. Um, Laurel Stewart does dulcimer. You know, everybody's got hobbies. She does art also. And Jill Joy for Gail. Um, Peter, what's your hobby? Uh, I, I was going to actually talk about that. Let me grab something here. Hang on just one second because it's right out of reach. You know, I, I do the art not only for pleasure, but for me when I'm upset or aggravated, it helps me to release the the pressure in my, you know, of my emotions. If I have something to focus on the small details when I'm painting my ceramics, you know, stuff like that. And just taking up a hobby, I'm going to switch screen here. Taking up a hobby or doing art doesn't have to be expensive. This piece that you're looking at is rolled paper. It, was a lot of fun to do. It really helped with the anxiety, but it was cheap. And so this rolled paper I've made into a box and I have some of the note cards in it for places that I want to go and things that I want to do. That's cute. Gail. And literally yeah. the stack yeah. is like you on that, Gail. Do what? You should do a how to do that video. Show us how you to create that. Yeah, I might just do that. Um, but I, for me, I've got these all these plans <laughs> for things that I want to do, and I have them broken down. And I'm actually going to talk about this on my other channel in a couple of weeks. But I got them broken down to states, uh, Tennessee, Virginia, Tennessee State Parks, North Carolina, Georgia, Kentucky. Um, so I, but I did the box and it cost glue. Everything else I already had laying around. Like these are those magazines that they send you and <laughs> advertisements that they send you in the mail. That's a great yeah. mechanism. Recycle. Hey, Gail, you need to add Forest Park and the Muni to that box. Okay. In St. Louis. Those are great places. I think I have Forest Park in there. What was the other one? The Muni. It's an outdoor theater that's been in St. Louis for a very long time. 
I've been once because they do have free seats. And oh. it's amazing. I love to watch plays at the Muni. And nice. like said, they do have free seats. You they have paid seats or free seats, and the free seats are first come, first serve. Nice. And we, it's an outdoor theater. That that's really great. And of course, we have to be outdoors right now. So yeah. Um, going back, Laurie Smith is saying yes, and some of us have no family. My encourage my friends encourage me daily. So true. Um I guess an always Andy, blood. we love you. It's not what? Always blood. That's true. Some of my closest family I don't share any blood ties with, but they're still my family. I you know, I agree. And some of the people that I do have blood ties with are not necessarily people I'm going to hang out with. I, I might see them at Christmas and Thanksgiving, but mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, not necessarily who I'm going to hang out with. Um, now, Peter did st say something about woodworking. I saw it. I'm not sure where it went, but nice. for me, a lot of men go with woodworking. I'm going to, I am going to take that comment. Um, just also, woodworking. Candy, yeah, woodworking is a lot of fun. It, it can involve a lot of expensive equipment, but men have taken out their pocket knife and whittled for a lot of years. I know leather working is a, is a hobby of some people yes. too. And Laurie said my box was pretty. So thank you, Laurie. Okay, see ya. And Laurie says that's a great idea. Yeah, I think about this as being my positivity box. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit on when, when I talk about the box and drip planning on the other channel in a few, couple of weeks. But I love that I idea. Think of it. Positivity box. Yeah, it, awesome. it helps me stay focused. Yeah. Think, uh, this right here is another thing. I think speaking to other people about trivial things, about things that worry you, knowing you have someone to go to that won't judge you for whatever you're worried about, and that, that you know will listen to you no matter what your problem is, and they won't say, oh, that's trivial or trivialize what worries you. They will listen and support you no matter what decision you make. I think that's vital too. I call those people my soul tribe. Absolutely. Those people that are not not normal. I mean, they don't have to be related to me, but those are people I know I can go to no matter what, even if it's years apart. And it's like I never left. And I know that no matter what, I have that support. And those are my soul tribe members. And that's my family to me. That's what that is for me. And I think everybody has to have somebody like that. Family is not always blood, but it's someone you know you can go to that will support you no matter what decision you make, no matter what mistake you make. They're not going to say, ha ha, look at what, you know, how full she made. No, they're going to say, are you okay? They're going to pick you back up. Or like one of my friends said, if you get in trouble, they're in the cell right next to you going, now how do we get out of this? True. You know. um, I also want to bring up Candy's comment. She says that she taught her five-year-old students how to do that craft when she taught. And she said that they made them for residents in nursing homes. And I really like that idea. Um, but really a cool I idea. wanted to toss that out because it's a cheap thing to do because it was only like literally only the cost of glue. Um, also, there's lots of other free crafts that you can make out of recycled items which you're shifting your focus, not just are you doing the craft, but if you're using recycled items, then you know you're helping the environment. And that those are two good things that you can feel good about. And if also, you have an interest, there's a ton of crafts on Pinterest. Oh, yeah. Pinterest is dangerous for me. I have to try to stay off of that. <laughs> uh, Candy is saying that she taught the guys in the nursing home how to loom knit, even with limited mobility. I even talk, taught a young lady who was blind how to loom knit. So neat. And maybe sometimes we can talk about how to do cheap crafts because that's a way to switch focus too. My local library actually sent out packets 
one year of fab and then all we did was tie make tie pillows there are pieces of fabric that are cut in a way that you tie them together you fill them with cotton or pillow filler and then tie them closed and we did a whole bunch of them and donated them to the local senior center so nice. you, can, you know it, you can take even just old fabric you got lying around and make little bean bags for kids or pillows for your neighbors or whatever it doesn't have to cost you hardly anything and it gives you something to do so yeah I, and that ha that helps you shift your focus and shifting your focus from your problems onto other things i think is really one of the things that helped me one of the tips mm -hmm. for how to be positive in difficult situations was shifting that focus and saying okay this is a negative i'm going to turn around for a positive or if someone said something to me that was negative training my mind to automatically flip and saying no that's not true this is true another yeah. way to train your mind and that's a good point gail you really need to change your mind's focus before you're going to change everything else in my and another one that works really well for me is to write nobody has yes. to see the notebook but you you write everything you're thinking everything you're feeling nobody has to see this book but you but get it all out because sometimes seeing it on paper when you reread it even if it's years later may help you feel better about what happened i like to make lists and have lists of positives and negatives of, of situations that are bothering me. And sometimes I'll go to other people and go, am I seeing this through my own lens of experience or is this how it seemed, you know, to you? Like when I figured out that the, the friendship relationship that I had that I thought was so well was actually emotionally abusive. I went to several people after I made those lists and said, listen, did I see this relationship a different way than you did? And several of them said, yeah, we've been waiting on you to realize that, that it was emotionally abusive, but you had to come to that on your own. And for me, writing down, and no one sees, I have notebooks literally in every room in my house. No one sees them but me. But I'm able to, when something's bothering me, grab my pen, write it down, and it makes me feel better to get it out on paper where I can see it. And, and to me, it helps me validate what I'm feeling. Definitely. Making lists, keeping a journal, writing letters to yourself, those are all good ways to stay positive. Even if you're feeling negative and you're mad at someone like, the person I was mad at has been dead for 10 years, but I was still feeling those negative feelings. So I took my pen and I wrote her a letter and I wrote all the negative things I was feeling and I wrote how hurt I was. Would she ever see the letter? I don't know, but it made me feel better to do it. And it helped me to process everything and get through it. So, you know, you have to find a way that what's going to help you feel quantify your feelings feel you know feel like they, they're worth something because what you're feeling it's worth it yes never push your feelings down it's like shaking an old glass soda bottle you put your finger in the top and you give it a shake what happens everything blows up your emotions to me are the same way i had a nervous breakdown because i used to push my negative emotions down inside myself and it built up so badly that I had a nervous breakdown. And you can't let that happen. You have to let your feelings out, negative and positive. Absolutely. That I want to share this article okay. that I found um, when I was getting ready for this segment on it's Psychology Today. The name of the article is Seven Tips for Staying Positive. But I want to bring up that the first one is to write in a gratitude journal every day. And I, and I thought, well, that's really interesting to call it a gratitude journal, but it helps you look for the positive. Yeah. And sometimes you can't see the positive, you know, but I thought that was interesting. Also, um, listening to music, like we talked about, number two tip for staying positive there. Um, but it's really 
a neat article. A lot of good things actually are on the internet to help us stay upbeat. You know, um, this also says challenge your negative thinking. You know, we talked about that too. And following passions, um, like with crafting. I think another thing you need to do is pamper yourself. Be yes. that, be that a, whatever that looks like for you. If, if, if it's a bubble bath, if pampering yourself is buying yourself a Domino's pizza, whatever. But I actually have a couple of things right here to show you about taking care of yourself. But first I want to say hi to Mel Mel, who has just come in. Hi Mel Mel. And, and Candy says, oh yes, Tanya, brainstorm writing is an excellent way to wake up, work out emotions. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Oh, yes and Laurie says she's been setting small achievable goals and notice the progress, noticing the progress that's made, also taking time to just breathe and be, you know, that mindfulness is huge. Uh, thinking about beauty in nature, the warmth of loving people, staying away from negativity. Great tips. Great tips. Great tips. Um, Great tips. But I've got a couple of things about taking care of yourself. I talked in another segment that we did about just having something pretty, just having a nice thing. So I got this glass, which is a pressed glass piece because I like those. So this spoke to me. But this glass cost me a whole $1 from the Dollar Tree plus tax. And I like it because it just helps me feel pretty. And we women have a right to feel pretty and men, you have a right to feel handsome. That's right. I have a glass like that. And I got some. Go uh, ahead. My friend and I bought some heavy goblets from the Dollar Tree and they were very plain and she knows how to etch glass. And so Ooh. she took them home and she, etched, she asked me what I wanted. And my grandmother used to grow roses. In fact, my mom's house is where my lives where my grandmother was. And the roses are still there that my grandmother tended all my growing up years, all my mom's growing up years. And so the roses mean something special to my family. So I had her put a rose etched in glass on these $1 goblets and put the word love. Do I, do I drink wine or do it? No, I pull them out and I have a glass of juice or glass of iced tea in them. You know, I don't drink either, but I'm not. Thought for anybody like, special company or whatever they're for when I'm down when I'm sad I pull out my pretty goblets that are one of a kind because my friend made them for me out of love and I treat myself that way you know for me or or I'll buy myself a new paint that only costs a dollar 94 for two ounces at Walmart the a new color that I've spied my eye on y'all know I love color so I buy myself that new paint or, or something or a, whatever. If you're, it doesn't matter, guy or girl, you've got to treat yourself. It's like when payday comes around, you've got to pay yourself a little something too. You know, I agree. I, um, this, I listened Candy. <laughs> oh, admitting that we're listening. That's pretty cool. Um, also, you know, another way to just kind of pamper yourself is get you some hand lotion. So I asked Santa Claus and Santa Claus brought some nice hand lotion in my stocking. So I love this stuff. Now, this happens to be from Bath and Body Works, but you can tell it's not a real big tube and I'm smelling it now and I don't even know why. It's just so pretty. This is the um, cookie. So love this. Yeah. I bought my, I've never owned a bottle of perfume that I bought myself. I've always owned perfume that someone's given me. Yes. So I went out for Christmas and I bought myself a bottle of perfume that I liked. And so like today, I'm not going anywhere except to take Archer for a walk and do some training with him later because he's getting a little lazy because we've been locked, you know, locked down for so long. So I, I put on some makeup, I put on some perfume and some comfortable, pretty clothes. And did I do it for anybody else? No, I did it for me and maybe Archer. But, you know, you don't have to do it for anybody else because this is what matters you and God. And, and you have to live in your own head. 
Nobody else lives in there, but God and you. So, or universe, spirit, whatever you believe. But you right. got to take care of you because if you you can't take care of nobody else, if you don't take care of yourself first, you're useless to anybody else. That's true. You for yourself first. You got to. Sometimes you can be a little quirky. Huh? Sometimes you can be a little quirky um, by taking care of yourself. One of the things that I like quirky. is my my slippers. Oh, I love those. And yes, they are my fluffy bunny slippers. And yes, I do wear them. I must confess, so, I used to have a pair that were whales because I love whales. There you go. I had a pair that were killer whales. I wore them so much, I literally wore the soles off of them. <laughs> But, you know, I just want to bring that up because taking your care of yourself doesn't have to be super serious. I mean, it can be little things like a pretty glass or lotion or just something fun like the shoes, you know. Sometimes I will buy a toy for Archer or a sweater for Archer, not for Archer, but because I get a kick out of it, you know. I'll have fun playing with that toy with him. Or I think that sweater would look adorable on him. One of my favorite things to do, which his, my friend Anne, which I, we call his Aunt Anne, they really doesn't like to let me do because she knows Archer hates it. I love to get those little antlers or whatever for the holidays and put them on his head and take a picture. Archer hates that. I'll do it for me. I do it because I think it's cute. And Anne's like, you know, he doesn't like that, you know, but I have a whole drawer full because I, if I, I think it's cute. It gives yep. me a laugh, you know, and meanwhile, he's doing this bit to get it off his head, but you got to do things for yourself. You do. And I want to say hi to Melanie, who is in. Melanie, it's good to see you. Hi, Melanie. And Mel Mel was pointing out that the Dollar Tree has some nice things real gems he's saying if you look carefully and that they really do yeah that uh, candy is talking too she says she makes butterflies out of used dryer sheets and people can't believe they're made with mod podge paint and forest wire so yeah i never thought of that so going back to crafts uh, as a way of taking care of yourself and staying positive it just doesn't have to be expensive I think we could do a whole live stream on inexpensive crafts. <laughs> I mean, I used to take popsicle sticks and glue them together in the form of a box and put a piece of leather on there for a hinge and put a marble on the top when I was a kid. And I would decorate those up and give them away as gifts when I was a kid. There you go. There you go. Um, also, Mel Mel is saying sometimes you need to feel good and look good for you. I agree. If you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anyone else, at least not in any way that's useful. So true. So true. One of my big pieces of advice is if, you know, don't let your, it build up on yourself so that you're going to put yourself in a place where you might have a nervous breakdown. I've been there twice and it's a very scary place to be at the bottom when you have nowhere else to look but up and you're so far down that you don't even care about you that is terrifying and I would not wish that on anybody I agree and so but I tend to think that a lot of times it's not just that we've not that we've put ourselves in there but that society has boxed us in and puts that, a lot of pressure on people yes and makes can make us feel, feel bad when I worked with juvenile offenders and my daughters, you know, growing up can tell you that a hundred million times, if I've said it once, I, I've said it a hundred million times, that the world is going to tear you down. Okay. Listen to your friends that are going to build you up. The world will lie to you and the world will put you in this dark space, mm -hmm. but there are voices around you that will lift you out of that. And for any children or young adults that may be listening, just because you're young doesn't mean you're exempt from that. True. I used to have braces when I was little. I've had them all my life. When I was five years old and starting kindergarten, I had had surgery just before kindergarten started. And I was wearing braces. I had just learned to walk again. And the children 
would quack at me and laugh at me and call me names and throw rocks at me when I was trying to go up a hill so that they would get under my braces and I would roll back down the hill. Just because you're a child or a young adult doesn't mean you're exempt from that kind of behavior. And just because you're an adult doesn't mean it won't happen to you as well. It's how you handle it when it happens and how you let it affect you. That's the biggest key. Agreed. Um, and Laurie is saying, yes, uh, she hasn't worked since December 2019 due to COVID and health issues. She said she was in a slump, but last week she started getting ready in the morning like she used to, and it seems to be helping. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that keeping a routine can be a great way to stay positive. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing to harken back to young children or animals or whatever or other people. Other people can help you stay in your routines. Like Archer, if I'm not awake by a certain time and he was raised in prison, they had to be up and ready for count by 5 a.m. And he was raised with that. So he's, you know, been out of the prison for over two years now, but he still has that, that pattern in him. And so if I'm not up by 5 a.m. and I had, you know, actually gone to sleep, he'll steal the pillow out from under my head. You know, he's in the pattern of this is time to get up. He may not be able to read a clock. But he knows, you know, 8 a.m. 8 p.m. hits and he's already in bed. He's like, it's time to go to bed, Mom. Let's get the, you know. And Isn't it funny how they know exactly what time things are. So don't yeah. be afraid to lean on others to help you stay in a pattern if you need to. Yeah, keeping that routine. Also, Candy is saying that sometimes you need to give loved ones or friends space when they pull you down. Yeah, I agree. And over here on the Psychology Today, they had a really interesting bit to say about that. Okay, six Psychology Today, six ways to become more positive today. Down here, it's about the crabs. We're, oh, ditch the crabs. And it's saying... If you put a crab in a bucket, it will easily climb out. But if you put a second crab in the bucket, neither will escape. Once, star once one starts to escape, the other will pull it back down in the bucket. And it says, in other words, surround yourself with positive people. It's hard to maintain a positive perspective if you're constantly pulling down by the negativity of friends, family, or coworkers. Yeah. And goes on to talk about um, being trapped in a negative conversation. But if you're surrounded by a bucket full of negative crabs, it, this says it may be time to reevaluate your circle of friends in an effort to be surrounded by uplifting people. And so I thought that was really profound. You know, I don't like being compared to a crab, but not always it worked just your friends you can have family members that you absolutely adore that you can't be around i know how that feels and and there's times when i have to step away from even certain people in my blood family and go listen i need a, i can't be around this right now i can't be around you right now because for my mental health there's certain things i can't allow because i know me well enough to know that will help me slip back into the depression and everything that led to the nervous breakdowns that I had. And I don't want to let my mind go there again. So there's certain people and it doesn't have to just be your friends. It can be your acquaintances, your neighbors, your blood family. It doesn't matter. You got to learn to distance yourself and say, listen, I know it's hard to say that to some people, but like my mom and I, we tend to fight if we're around each other for too long. We're too much alike. There's times when I have to say, listen, I have to go. I have to hang up or you need to leave because I can't be around you right now. Is it easy? No, but it's what's best for me. Right. And we, we sometimes have to set those boundaries. Um, I recently had to block someone from my Facebook account that I've been friends with for a long time. Mm -hmm. And that was because there was a boundary and it got crossed. And yes, it hurts to put, have that person out of my life. I miss it, but I know that it's a lot healthier for me. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I think it's going to be healthier for the other person too, because we're kind of feeding off of each other. And sometimes yeah. you just have to stop that. 
Yeah, I mean, there's people I know, like a lady at, at my church who I have been having struggles with. She keeps commenting on my service dog and how big he is. And his vet's okay with how he is. I'm okay with how he is. His, his breeder is fine with it. And I've had to just distance myself from her because I'm going to, I, I'm not just a redhead because I dye my hair. I'm a redhead normally. I've got a redhead temper. You know, my grandma, she used to say, Joe, you know why you're redheaded? And I'd say, no, grandma, why am I redheaded? She goes, it's easy. All the steam goes out the roof. And <laughs> okay. I've always had a bad temper. And I know myself to know that I need to distance myself from this person. I'm going to have to switch churches because I don't want to confront her. I don't want to argue. I don't want to cause problems. And I know myself well enough to know I'll get myself drugged into that if I stay around her. Is she my uh-huh. friend? Yes. Do I still care about her? Yes. But am I going to have to back off? Absolutely. And I also want to make the point that when you cut someone out of your life, that doesn't have to be permanent. People do grow and change. Sometimes it has to be permanent, but sometimes it can be just a temporary taking a break. Also, I want to bring up a couple of comments here. Uh, Candy is saying that sometimes you need to give loved ones or friends space when they pull you down. I agree. Like the said in the article, release the crabs, get them away, give them that space to run and be free. The run, Melanie, go ahead that are positive, even if they're not close to you. Gail and I live far apart. I live in Missouri. She definitely does not, but yet she's part of my soul tribe. She's one of the people I surround myself with that I know that that is a positive influence that helps me lift myself up and hopefully I can do the same for her. They don't have to be geographically close. You definitely need to surround yourself with people that are going to support you. I agree. And I'm glad that you're in my life. I appreciate that. Putting up with me. You and Laurel and Candy and Laurie and Mel Mel and now Melanie. Thank you. And Peter. Peter. Yeah. And also Melanie says, yes, you have to learn to distance yourselves. The book Boundaries is so good. And it's an excellent book. I totally forgot it. So thank you, Melanie, for bringing that up. Hey, guys. Uh, that book by i've never read it boundaries is a great book um it is it it talks about well it talks about boundaries and melanie is saying that it, it talks about how a house has a fence and a clear distinction of fate of space but we don't have that emotionally and melanie she sums it up what melanie who's the author who wrote it you know, I'll have to get, personally, I'll have to go look. Melanie, if you know off the top of your head. Would somebody, uh, would somebody let me know or drop it in the group or something so I can get yeah. that book? I, I can, I can certainly add the link for the book into our group over on Facebook, which That's- if you all haven't joined that yet, it's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Gail vlogs. So come join us. Um, and let's see. Candy the Wee Service Dog says she calls it house cleaning. Like sweep up the dirt and throw it out. If you have people talk trash, take it to the curb. It's curb essentially doing a friendship cleanse. I and like that. Candy says, yes, Laurie. Absolutely, Gail. Oh, and Melanie is saying that she thinks it's by Dr. Henry Cloud. I'm definitely going to so, look that book up. Thank you very much. It is a good book. That's another, so, I'm, I read, you know, sometimes losing yourself in another world, be it a TV show like Star Trek or Star Wars or whatever, uh, or, or a good book or a good audio book, uh, podcast, whatever, lose yourself in another world for a while. Don't be afraid to walk out of reality, so to speak become immersed in another world even if it's not real and have fun and play i like to write i like to write what's called fan fiction which are little stories based on books or movies and 
it for me it's like walking around in another world for a while forgetting my own world my own troubles my own worries and having fun that's what really it's about is having fun for yourself because if self don't matter nothing else does either true true um and i pulled it up on amazon and it is by dr henry cloud and also john townsend yeah so, let's drop that link in the group if you don't mind don't mind at all I'll be glad to and it'll be an amazon affiliate link so if you all buy through that link on amazon um i will make a tiny uh, commission off of that but it doesn't cost you more than it usually would and all of that right now is going toward my dog she's that I'm trying to get dog. for those of you who don't know she's getting a service dog through cares incorporated and the cost of the dog is five thousand dollars so she's got a while to go for fundraising and fundraising is not easy it took me three and a half years to get thirty five hundred so for her to have to raise five thousand let's support her and give her whatever we can Thank you. And, you know, shopping for free from Amazon is very helpful. Um, but I did also want to toss that out there just so you know it's an Amazon affiliate link. You know, don't want to sneak it on anybody. Um, also, I think we would be remiss not to talk about mindfulness and meditation. Now, this doesn't have to be hours sitting in the floor cross-legged like the first thumbnail in this on YouTube. Um, it can be as simple as just sitting in a chair and breathing for 20 seconds, you know, just concentrating on letting that air go in and out of your body. And if you're not sure about what mindfulness is or how to even get started meditating, then the YouTube again has a long list and so the meditation coming on to youtube and looking for those videos mm -hmm. you know that can be very helpful and just because go ahead uh, you can also meditate and pray at the same time sometimes yep. for me it's intermingled sometimes because i don't like to pray formal stiff prayers that's not how i that's not, not how, how i think pray. of god and that's not how i relate so for me, sometimes the meditation is just talking to God, just like I'm talking to the rest of you guys, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes that, that prayer is a simple line that I repeat over and over again. Don't yeah. let me say something stupid. Don't let me lose my temper. Don't help me hold my tongue. That's a very common one for me because I tend to shoot off at the mouth when I'm angry. Uh oh. You know? And, and I, that's and another I, show. We won't, we won't talk yeah, about that. I know, but I, I let those, you know, God help me through this. God help me through this. God. And that can be a simple meditation too, until the situation's resolved and the pressure is released. Or it could be sitting there and just thinking about nothing. Don't think about a thing. Just let all your thoughts go in one ear and right out the other. And it can be as minute, five minutes, five hours, depends on what you want. True. But and a, lot, a lot of people, when we meditate or when we practice mindfulness, having a candle can be very helpful. Um, but I have a tendency to knock candles over. I was going to say electric candles. So I bought, yeah, I bought the battery operated and people say, well, it's not the same. And actually, no, it's not. But this light bulb actually flickers. So it mimics a flickering I candle. I about getting those because see, I have this big furry yellow thing that I showed you just a second ago. Who yeah. likes to wag his tail and sweep things off the tables. And then I have, like I said, I have some muscles, several palsy, which causes muscle twitches. So I have to keep candles far away from me because if I have a muscle twitch and my arm flings out, you don't want to start a fire. So sure. I've really thought about those battery operated candles. I haven't gotten myself a set yet, but I've been they're nice. Dollar Tree, you know, Mel Mel said there's some real gems at the Dollar Tree and there sometimes are. Um, Dollar this particular one came from Hobby Lobby, but the other ones that I have, uh, they're a little smaller, and all of those came from the Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree. Love that store. I can't go in there without going out with something. And Laurie Smith is saying that she did a lot of study on boundaries and that Robert Bernie also has some great info. Now, we're not saying all this is going to be easy, like walking in the park. Right. Nothing in life is ever easy. 
But if you really think you need to put yourself first, you're going to have to make some sacrifices and, and it's going to be kind of hard. But in the end, the reward is so worth it because the more you help yourself, the more you can help somebody else. And I also wanted to mention that professional help is out there. And for some of these things, you know, if you're if you're going to remove someone from your life and, and release those crabs, you may need a support person that's a professional and that is totally fine. That's why they're there. You know, these people wouldn't exist if they weren't needed. Yeah, so. there's nothing wrong with having professional help. In fact, I will go on camera and admit I have had therapy. I am desperately glad I had the therapy. I still use those techniques today, and I still have a therapist today. And I'm thankful every day for the ability to have that. I know my mom said ever since I was growing up, you better be grateful for what little you do have because there's someone out there that doesn't have everything you do. There's someone out there that's always worth off than you are. And it's no shame to use those. If you don't want to tell people you're in therapy, you don't have to. Right. You know, it's and even though that there are people yourself. that may be worse off, we still can't compare ourselves to that because what we're going through is very difficult for us. And oh. that's, that's what counts. Um, and hopefully some of this about staying positive is helpful. Um, also, I, daily positive affirmations or reading the Bible and looking for those wonderfully helpful passages and it is has, awesome. It doesn't have to be a, a big line or a Bible. Reading the Bible doesn't have to be a whole book or a whole chapter. Right. Uh, sometimes it can be one verse or, or one little sentence to yourself. I am me and I am okay. But there That's are also, trying to pull this up, there's also apps that you can get. Um, here we go. Like this one, for example. Oh, it's it's green on the background. Sorry. Um, but I'll it gives you the daily that. affirmation. And this one says, I'm the architect, architect of my life. I build its foundation and choose its contents. And this app is called Affirmation Now. And it's it's a freebie, but it hits you daily with a positive affirmation. I have to look that so one up. When I free was, apps can be helpful too. When I was also, in high school, my teacher had this big poster on the wall in my LD classroom, my learning disabilities classroom. And the title of it was, I am me and I am okay. And there was a whole thing written on there about yourself and and. But I, the title always stuck with me. I am me and I am okay. And that's those positive affirmations like that, like this. There are tools that will, or websites rather, that will email them to you daily. Those are such a great way to stay upbeat. Mm -hmm. And Candy, we service dog, um, going back to the chat here, Candy is saying, that's what I have to do as my daughter-in-law. I've done this with other relationships. Sometimes it's short term, long term, and unfortunately, sometimes it is permanent. We're talking about releasing those crabs there. Uh, Laurie says, I agree, Tanya. We don't make time for fun. I have started doing that, watching my favorite movies, laughing, practicing guitar, and just enjoying. And Laurie, every Hi. time you say practicing guitar, it reminds me I've got to get mine out. But yes, um, taking time for fun. Mm -hmm. I've been practicing the clarinet, and right now all practicing the clarinet means for me is putting it together and trying to blow through it, which made Archer drum scott cry. <laughs> but, you know, I have got to learn to get the wind before I can play the song. So for, you know, even just a little thing like that. And my favorite movie is The Goonies. But it's an I, old ladies movie, but I love it. I'll have to look that one up. Um, also, Melanie says having a candle is so helpful. Even battery operated is good. So thank you for being affirming of my battery operated candle. I love them. I'm going to go to the Dollar Tree and pick one up. I love going to the Dollar Tree. Talking about sp making time for fun, that would be it for me. Um, and Laurie says I do spend a large part of my day in prayer, meditation on God's word, and mindfulness. It helps immensely. Yes, it does. 
Also, Melanie says she agrees. Laurie, it helps so much. Uh, Candy is saying, Laurie, I choose to laugh rather than cry. I find crying helps clean out my spirit. But if I feel life with things that smile, let me get. And Laurie says it does, Melanie. And she's saying, I agree, Laurel. Tears are good when we need to cry. Laughter is good medicine. Amen. Candy said, I just did a phone doctor visit. She let me share everything with both negative and positive, and it just renewed my energy. There you go. And I think another thing is don't feel you have to do what everybody else does. I've always said this, and if you watch my videos, I say it a lot. You do you. You do what's right for you. It doesn't mean it's going to be what's right for everybody else. Just what's right for me is not right for Laurel, Candy, Gail, or Peter, or Melma, or Melanie. What's right for you is right for you. You don't have to hold yourself to everybody else's standards. That's true, because your standards may be a lot higher. Mm -hmm. And so, and Candy says, that's great, Laurie. And yes, I agree. Y'all, we've had some what, great tips, great tips today for being upbeat and staying positive and, you know, just kind of staring down those difficult circumstances. Yeah, thank you everyone for being here. Yeah. We're watching this on replay and you have some tips for positivity. You want to leave in the comments? Feel free to do that. Yep. I was just just fixing to, as we say in the South, I was just fixing to say, does anyone else have anything that they want to add, either you or in the chat, um, before we close out today? Yeah, we say that too. Just fixing to, that's my grandma always used to say. Yeah, that, that's a big thing in the South, fixing to and bless your heart and a few yeah. things like that. If my grandma said, oh, bless your heart, you were being insulted. You know, she was yeah. telling you that, well, you just didn't do things exactly the way she thought you should. And then, you know, you better. <laughs> yeah, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> this is about being positive and staying positive. Yeah. And grandmas can be positive. They can, they can dispense a lot of good, positive. Cook. Yeah. One of the best things about my grandma, she could cook. She used to make homemade chocolate fried pies. Oh, my Lord. I'm going to gain 10 pounds just being on some of these shows. <laughs> okay. And Laurie Smith says, just being here with you, my friends, it has made my day a better day. And Laurie, you're awesome. You're I just want awesome. to put that out there. You are awesome. Thank you all for okay. coming today. So thank you all for watching. Uh, we'll see you Tuesday at noon and then Sunday at 9 p.m. We do our weekly prayer and Bible discussions. So come on out for both of those. That's at 9 p.m. on Sunday nights. And then this show is at 12 noon on Tuesdays. So thanks for coming out, y'all. Tanya, thanks for being on here. I hope you all have a fabulous week. Um, and Candy is saying in the strength to finish packing. Amen. Good for that. Okay. You help Candy. Just you can call do me. it. You can do it. All right. So thank you all again. And I'll see you over in the group. Uh, just go ahead under the link that I posted this video on and post any other tips or ideas or suggestions that you may have. And I'll post that book link too. So like thank you all. And I will see you. Yeah, and I'll see you all Tuesday. Okay, take Bye. care. Bye-bye.